Wild and wonderful West Virginia. Many things come to mind when you hear that phrase. Maybe it's John Denver's Country Road Song, or maybe you've gone skiing there. In this two-part episode, we're going to show you the wild or adventurous side, as well as the wonderful or cultural side of this 35th state. West Virginia has its fair share of scenic mountains. Seneca Rocks is in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia and is one of the best known sites in this area. Hiking trails allow you to reach several majestic overlooks, but if you really want the best views, you'll have to take up mountain climbing since the southern peak of Seneca Rocks is inaccessible without the proper equipment. In the rock climbing world, Seneca is referred to as a razorback or fin. Its sheer rock faces are a popular challenge for thrill seekers. The park below Seneca Rocks is a great place to have an outdoor lunch and enjoy the enormity of this rock formation from a distance. You might even catch a peek at a butterfly hanging out on some of the many wildflowers. But even if you don't want to scale a cliffside, the mountains of West Virginia have just as much going on below the surface. Okay, this next place is gonna be super fun. We get to go into some caves. Seneca Caverns have been a popular destination for would-be cave explorers for almost 100 years. Their traditional tour lasts about an hour and is a fantastic experience for all ages. When we arrived, we grabbed our safety equipment and then our guide Dylan led us below. Bats, you're probably not gonna see a bat here in this cave but on the off chance that you do just leave it alone, it will leave you alone. They are a federally protected species, so we do have to watch out for those little guys. The tour takes you along a well-lit pathway through its subterranean world. The rock formations and large chambers make you feel like you're in some sort of dwarven kingdom from Lord of the Rings or other fantasy world. Due to its underground nature, the cave stays cool year-round, which makes it a great place to visit if you're trying to catch a break from the summer heat. Dylan was a fantastic guide. He has a wealth of information about the caverns and took delight in pointing out areas of special interest to us. The people here seem to really enjoy their job and it's obvious they've taken a great deal of care in crafting their tour. Some areas have even been lit in a way to help add to the sense that you're truly in another world. Seneca Caverns is well worth your time if you have even a passing interest in geology and the formation of the earth. And if you're traveling with children, it's truly a perfect adventure for the whole family. And while the caves are a big show, so to speak, it's not all this place has to offer. They have a great restaurant on site, as well as a gemstone mining attraction. You can purchase bags of mining rough at the gift shop and then head out to begin uncovering your own precious treasures. And the waters of West Virginia get fast outside of man-made constructs. The rivers and creeks of West Virginia are world famous in the whitewater community. And when you combine this fast flowing water with the state's epic cliff sides, you're also treated to some of the country's most amazing waterfalls.
In Davis, West Virginia, you have Blackwater Falls. Blackwater Falls State Park offers a scenic walkway to what is obviously the park's main drawing power. The falls themselves are a 57-foot cascade over dark rocks and one of the most photographed venues in the state. The park also contains a number of smaller falls and you can spend a great deal of time exploring the many trails and checking out the views from every angle. The black water is a result of tannic acid, which occurs due to the hemlock and red spruce needles, which often fall into the water. The walkway to the falls has a lot of steps, but the views are definitely worth it. And you didn't come to West Virginia to sit the whole time, did you? Right by the falls, the town of Davis has its own special charm. A brewery and a number of small trendy shops line the main street. It's just one example of how the small towns of West Virginia have more to offer than their traditional stereotypes. Okay, you should know by now that I am a big kid trapped in this body. Well, all kids like railroads and this is a steam engine. It is so cool. The Durban Rocket is a two-hour round-trip excursion. It's a great chance to experience what travel was like in a time when the country was growing at a rapid pace. Even if you opt to not take the tour, the train depot itself is a fantastic place for photos and to imagine yourself in a different time. Our trip there introduced us to a furry traveler who seemed quite content to just sit in the sun. Tickets, tickets, get your tickets! Much like Davis, the small town around the depot is a beautiful slice of America to explore or buy a souvenir at. And if you're a true locomotive fanatic, you're in luck because the Durban isn't the only historic train chugging through these mountains. All aboard to Cass Scenic Railroad. The Cass Railroad and State Park are a chance to experience the rich history of a time when steam trains were part of the everyday routine. Much like Durban, it's a fascinating place to walk around even if you don't take the tour. The park itself transports you to an original lumbering town complete with a company store that now serves as a gift shop. You might be used to little gift shops inside museums, but the Cass Company store kind of flipped that on its head. The store is large and filled with local items for purchase, but it also has small displays to help give you a sense of the history of this town, including a functioning soda shop and an old pharmacy counter. This is Nelson Rocks and I can go ahead and tell you right now, this is not for the faint of heart. This is a thrill seeker's paradise, and I can't wait to show you this. Nelson Rocks, or N Rocks, is another fin rock formation. N Rocks is a popular place for zip lining as well as several other extreme experiences. One of the most popular is called the Via Ferrata. The Via Ferrata is an assisted rock climb. It takes between three and five hours, and during it you cross a 200-foot suspension bridge that is suspended 150 feet above the ground, as well as climb two sheer rock faces using iron rings. Eventually, you top out on a thin piece of rock about five feet wide. You're probably numb when you're up there, but the views can't be beat. And if one day of adventure isn't enough, Enrox also offers up great lodging options, including small hotel-style rooms and some awesome cabins. It's a one-of-a-kind experience.
Yesterday we were at NROC and I ran across Justin Harris and I, the only thing I can say is he's an extreme sports guy. A neat thing about him is he is the media liaison for Canaan Valley Resorts, mm -hmm. and, which is where we're at here. And Canaan Valley has so much to offer and can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well being an action sports junkie uh, in four seasons, uh, this place is just a dream for me and I love my job. Um, you know, Canaan Valley has been known for skiing for a long time and in the winter time we've got a great ski mountain up here and the ski mountain itself um, you know, has a lot of tree skiing, which is something I love. But at the same time, we're out here now in the summertime. And I mean, this place is incredible four seasons. Summertime has so much to offer. I'm a whitewater kayaking enthusiast. Uh, we've got a class four or five river an hour north of here, but we also have class two and three uh, rivers all around. And when it rains, we've got some epic class four or five creeks, waterfalls. The Blackwater uh, River is not too far away. And the Blackwater is one of the most world-class pieces of white water there is out there. I mean, people come from all over the world. There are some of the best kayakers in the world to do that. Um, Canaan Valley also, I'm a golfer, which I know is not an extreme sport, but our golf course is right out here, and it's an absolutely beautiful golf course, and I love to get out on the golf course. We've got the pool down here. Um, also, our hotel, uh, just as a base camp to stay, this is an amazing hotel. We just had a renovation in 2013, $34 million renovation by the state. Uh, we got our balcony rooms, which I know you guys visited today, yeah. and it's just a beautiful place to uh, start your outdoor adventure and experience. So, And I could go on forever about the amount of hiking trails, the amount of mountain biking trails that we have. Davis and Thomas, the food uh, is great here. It just is one of those secret spots in Northern West Virginia that can't be beat. And I mean, I'm so glad that people are starting to discover it and visit us more and more. So. I've heard about it all these years as a kid, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, being here, it's, uh, ah, the views are just breathtaking. They, they are, and um, also being a photographer, the, the photography throughout this place is amazing. Whether it's landscapes you're shooting, whether it's action sports or macro photography, which is something I've been working on lately, the uh, flora and fauna, or and, um, and just the wildlife in this area, it gives you so much to offer. So no matter what you're doing, it, it's, it's a one of a kind experience, especially for West Virginia. Justin shared with me that Canaan Valley sits in, well, a valley and it causes it to have snow longer than other locations, giving an extended skiing season. As Justin mentioned about their renovations, their rooms are posh and definitely the nicest I've seen for miles. I would absolutely make this my base for a few days the next time I'm in this area. Are you up for some biking? Well then the Greenbrier River Trail has 70 miles of rail to trail. It's all cinders and along the way you'll see water pumps, the old fashioned style, that are actually new uh, so you can quench that thirst. In case you're not familiar with the term rail to trail, it means that at one point this trail used to be a railroad, but now it's being used for hiking, horseback riding, and biking. The Greenbrier has been rated as one of the top 10 hiking trails by Backpacker Magazine. If you're hoping to really get off the grid, this trail is perfect as part of it lies within the National Radio Quiet Zone, so cell service isn't really a thing here and you can experience the beauty of nature without the distractions of the outside world. place I'm about to show you, well, I sort of thought of it as like Stonehenge or Easter Island or something with its rock formations, but my crew say, no, it's more like a castle ruins or it's more like Jurassic World. So you guys will have to tell me what you think, but I think it's one of the coolest parks I've ever seen. Let's go check it out. Many of the world's mysterious rock formations are man-made, but the ones here in Beartown State Park were conjured up by Mother Nature herself. West Virginia has been careful to not overdevelop the park in order to not interfere with the natural beauty of this place. The 
path between these impressive boulders leads you along a simple wooden boardwalk that weaves through the rocks. The boardwalk adds safety to a path that was largely naturally occurring. In fact, the town part of the name, Bear Town, is because from above, the crisscrossing through the rocks resembles the streets of a town. The bear in the name is because cave-like openings in the rocks make great winter homes for the state's native black bears. All throughout, pits of various sizes have eroded in the surface of the rocks. And although we tried to compare it to Stonehenge, Jurassic Park, and even Star Wars Endor, it's really its own unique piece of magic. So a lot of the parks, including the Greenbrier River Trail, have these neat old-fashioned water pumps. And so after that long walk through the park, it's time to uh, get some water. And one thing to note, it has a little bit of a sulfur smell to it because this is the White Sulphur Springs area. So it'll just have a little bit of an odor. It's okay though. This is the Green Bank Observatory where you can find the Green Bank Telescope. It's the biggest of its kind in the world. And I think they're actually talking to aliens maybe. The Green Bank Observatory is the world's largest fully steerable radio telescope and sits at the heart of the National Radio Quiet Zone. Yeah, I know. It looks like a satellite dish. And if you could use it as one, I'll bet it would get channels from galaxies far, far away. The surface has a 100 meter diameter. That's massive. To put that in perspective for you, the average neighborhood home sits on a one quarter acre lot. This is 2.3 acres in size, or large enough to contain the yards of five neighborhood homes on its surface. What does it do? Well, it looks off into space for aliens. Okay, maybe I'm not supposed to tell you that part as that falls under the top secrecy of things such as Area 51 and Sugar Grove Station, which is the nearby NSA base. But this telescope has had numerous discoveries over the years, including pulsars, magnetic fields, molecular clouds, and neutron stars, just to name a few. It even found complex molecules such as sugar in space. The observatory's visitor center also houses a number of interactive science displays that allow you to steer a model of the telescope and gain a better understanding of the scientific concepts that help this massive structure do its thing. Behind me is Summersville Lake, and this lake is epic with all of the cliff sides going along the shoreline. Summersville Lake is the largest in West Virginia and has a max depth of 327 feet. The lake is a popular place for fishing, boating, snorkeling, and scuba diving, and even though it's not really the open sea, the tall cliffs around the lake make you feel like you're about to set off on a pirate adventure. This is Summersville Dam, which is at Summersville Lake, of course. And I have an interesting story to tell you about it. Most dams are either named after a person such as the Hoover or the nearest town. Summersville is a rare exception. The closest town is actually the town of Gad. The second closest town was Summersville. So they went with Summersville Dam and Summersville Lake. This is the New River Gorge Visitor Center. And the New River Gorge Bridge is the largest of its kind and it's got a scenic view uh, that they have made steps going down. So you're gonna get your exercise, but your exercise is really coming back up. Although I said it's the largest of its kind, it's actually been bumped down to the fourth longest signal span arch bridge since its initial completion in 1977. The bridge has been immortalized on the West Virginia State Quarter, which is appropriate considering the huge boost to the West Virginia economy it gave during its initial construction. The final cost of construction was close to $37 million, and think about that in 1977. At the time, it was the West Virginia Department of Highway's largest project to date. The trip between one side of the gorge and the other used to be 45 minutes, but now takes about 45 seconds and over 16,000 vehicles pass over the bridge daily. 
The quick trip across might not give you enough time to appreciate the view below, but I recommend checking out the visitor center and overlooking in the morning when the fog is still rolling in. This is Snowshoe Village and there's just a neat eclectic feel to all the buildings around here. But there's lots of shops, there's also lots of restaurants and my tummy is telling me it's time to eat so we're going to go into Foxfire Grill. The Foxfire Grill has some fantastic food and since so many different types of visitors come to Snowshoe, their menu caters to a wide range of diets. But you don't come to Snowshoe to stay inside. In the warmer months, Snowshoe is a great place for mountain biking. And Snowshoe Village has lots of fun activities such as a zip line and rock climbing wall. The main attraction of Snowshoe, however, happens when things get a little colder and Snowshoe Village transforms into a winter wonderland. Uh, this is the place to be if you're going to be skiing, like one of the best ski resorts on the East Coast, and it's here in Snowshoe, West Virginia. The Snowshoe Ski Resort offers a wide range of different packages and is a great place to take lessons or tackle some of their more advanced slopes if you're an experienced skier. The snow-covered views of this mountain can't be beat, and humans aren't the only ones enjoying this beautiful place. The deer around here are more used to mankind than most, and you'll likely catch a glance of at least one or two. Snowshoe makes it as easy to get around as they can, and they even offer an adaptive skiing program. What is adaptive skiing, you ask? Adaptive skiing is for people with disabilities that otherwise wouldn't be able to ski. At Snowshoe, they believe skiing is for everyone and offer a wide range of equipment as well as one-on-one -on -one lessons for three and four track skiing. During our time there, we met a wounded warrior who lost a leg, an athlete who was paralyzed from the waist down, and a person with a traumatic brain injury from a car accident that gave them limited mobility from their left side. I'm here with Carol Woody yes. from the um, Challenge Athletes of West Virginia. This is the Adaptive Sports Center here in the Silver Creek area of Snowshoe Mountain here in West Virginia. Okay, and they do adaptive skiing as well as what other sports? Um, well, our primary thing is, and especially we're here in the winter now, is uh, skiing and snowboarding. Um, and but we do offer uh, summertime activities as well that that we've got some hand cycling, do some bicycling, and we've done whitewater rafting and horseback riding and some camps in the summer and stuff too in the past, so. Okay. Is it expensive for somebody that is that has a disability that uh, to come here and do this? Um, I mean, obviously skiing in general is, is known to be kind of an expensive sport, but um, we do have uh, programs where if, if you don't have the means to pay for it, then we have scholarship programs. Um, we do charge for our services, but they're um, relative to the, the cost of skiing, they're actually less expensive in most cases. We do, um, you know, we want to make it accessible for, for all people. I have Jeff Coston here. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, and he is one of the, uh, I guess, what would you say, instructor or? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I work here on staff development, you know, making sure that our people are well trained and, you know, safe at doing their job and have fun doing their job. But one of the things I found fascinating is how far you actually come to actually do this. Yeah, I, I'm from Suffolk, Virginia, 
but uh, I spend my winter here on the mountain and I've been here uh, as professional staff since 2002. So, you know, this is, is definitely, you know, a passion of mine and, and I like to see it go on with the other staff. You know, we have a lot of people, uh, some guys that came in this morning, drove, you know, got up this morning, drove five hours wow. to come in and teach for the day. But on that same note, I think our staff takes just as much out of this place as our students do. This is truly a fantastic program that helps people with disabilities once again feel enabled. And on a side note, they offer an adaptive skiing program at Canaan Valley Ski Resort as well. I implore everyone watching to donate to this nonprofit organization or a similar one near you. Snowshoe has many other things to offer as well, including snow tubing and something called adventure dining where you get to drive an off-road ATV through a snowy mountain trail where you arrive at a mountain cabin where a truly amazing meal awaits you along with a great glass of wine except, of course, for the designated driver of the ATV. We were told we should have dinner at Ellie May's Old Mill Restaurant located at Elk Springs Resort and that we should try the Rainbow Trout. I can attest that our food was magnificent. This is definitely a place I will return to. The Elk Springs Resort has the largest fly fishing shop in West Virginia and offers not only the amazing restaurant, but also mountain lodges and cabins, a guide service, trout ponds, and hunting. West Virginia truly is both wild and wonderful, often at the same time. This wraps up our look at some of the amazing and adventurous parts of West Virginia. In our next episode, we'll explore West Virginia's two largest cities and surrounding areas.